Well, good morning. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but I'm looking forward to reading the word and preaching the word. So today our scripture is from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 34. Hear the word of the Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. So pray, pray with me, please. Yes, Lord, you have said that we are like a sheep, sheep without a shepherd. So we ask that today you could speak into our lives the, through the truth of your word, through your word preached so that we can know more that we so that we can receive you as our shepherd and learn more and more how not to be afraid and we ask it in the name of our shepherd and our savior jesus amen well today i want to talk about fear maybe something we don't talk about that often and yet fear is something that is with us every day it drives many of the decisions that we make, and often without us even knowing it. It's, um, yeah, it's definitely something we don't talk about. Because, you know, who wants to talk about fear? <laughs> it's scary. And so, you know, for a minute, I guess I'll just start off saying, hey, you know, what are you afraid of? And of course, fear is a funny thing. It can go everywhere from, you know, I'm afraid of barking dogs to, um, you know, I'm afraid of flying, right? Fear comes in so many different forms. And so just think for a minute, um, what am I afraid of? I mean, we can be afraid that something will happen to a child. We can be afraid that, um, I don't know, the stock market will crash. We can be afraid, um, I don't know, of a fire. There are, there's an endless things to be afraid of. For a long time, uh, I said, I don't do fear. I really wasn't afraid of many things. And yet, I, um, through a powerful experience, I have learned a lot about fear. And I want to tell you a little bit of the story. So. Many of you know that I grew up on the Gulf Coast of Alabama. Beautiful, clear water, sandy white beaches. And as a child, it was a paradise. Our parents would literally turn us out and we'd be gone all day. We'd break off little pieces of styrofoam and we'd kick out practically to the horizon. And um, just loved, loved that ocean. But um, years ago, I saw a film that changed it for me. I saw Jaws, and many of you probably remember seeing that. And for some reason, that woke in me a deep, deep, uh, irrational, but, but terrifying fear of sharks. It even has a name, galeophobia. And it turned out then for this thing that I loved so much, this, the swimming and being in the ocean, being in the water, became a problem for me. I was always afraid. When I went in the ocean, I always felt like somehow a shark was going to attack me. And, um, you know, no amount of statistics about the, the, you know, the statistics of this happening mattered. Because fear is deep in our tissues. And it's hard for us to understand. One day, many years ago, over 20 years ago, Frank and I were down um, living at the beach, which I did in the summer when my kids were little. And he was taking them fishing. So I fried up a couple of pounds of bacon and sent them off. And it was early in the morning and I went over to the beach and I sat there on the shore. And I remember wrestling, I was 
I was like, I so want to go in that water, but I'm so afraid. But I'm tired of being afraid, but I am very afraid. And so I went back and forth, and I'm talking to God because, you know, I talk to God about everything. And, and more and more, I, I, the, my, my, my terror grew. I was really almost having a panic attack. But I said to myself, you are getting in that water. And there was, a, there was a, like a buoy out a ways. And I said, you are going to swim out to that buoy, and that's going to break your fear of sharks. And you're going to do it. And so by the just sheer decision and will, I walked and waded into the water. And as it got deeper and deeper, I, I pushed off and I began to swim. And, you know, without making many splashes because you don't want to splash too much, you know. So I'm, I'm swimming along and it's getting deeper and I'm getting further out. And over to my left, out of the water, jumped, pulled up a shark, broke the surface. And all I can tell you is it, it seemed to have something in its mouth. Well... I don't even know how I got back to shore, but I, I mean, literally, I, I walked on water, <laughs> me and Jesus, you know, and I got back to shore breathless, and every minute that I was swimming, I, I was just thought that it, the shark was going to grab my leg and pull me under, but I get back to shore, and I just hauled myself up onto the ground, heaving and um, terror-stricken, and um, I really believed that God had saved my life. And that was wonderful, but I was still afraid. The Bible's full of fear. We just don't always see it. We are so used to these stories that we just sort of glaze over them. We forget how afraid Adam and Eve were, or Jacob, afraid of Esau or the Israelites, afraid of their enemies. That, that we need to sometimes have a lens of fear to read the Bible. Because it's, it's important for us to see how much fear is, is discussed there. How much fear humanity actually has. And we can even zero in on the book of Mark. And, and with this lens of fear, you can see so much that Jesus went through. Jesus was afraid. Jesus was fully a human being. So whether it was the very first thing that he did was to be driven out into the wilderness, to be tempted by demons and wild beasts. I mean, we just read that and we don't even think about him as a lonely, alone human being going out into the wilderness, one to have the demonic test him, but also be demons. Jesus went to back to his hometown. He was rejected by his own people. He walked up to lepers. Everyone was terrified of lepers because you could catch it and then be cast out of your society, out of your community. He encountered a dead daughter. One of the most horrible fears that any parent would have is that their child would die. And here Jesus encounters the pain and the, the, the horror of this, this dead child. One of the first things Jesus did was to get out of the boat with his disciples after he had called them, and he encountered literally a wild man, the Gerasene demoniac, who chains could not hold, who, who literally spoke to him at, with the voice of a demon. Um, he, he encountered these, these terrifying things. Then his disciples, who he called, they had to encounter all these terrifying things too, and Jesus sent them out defenseless, with nothing, no protection, to encounter the same demons. The disciples saw Jesus walking on the water like a ghost, and they were terrified. The disciples had to retrieve the beheaded body of John the Baptist. This is all horror film stuff. And so we just have to get um, back to, to kind of rip off the... The, I, don't know, I don't know the lens that we use 
of like the nice Bible story and really see fear. Now why? Why? Why should we do that? Why should we encounter our own fear and the fear that's in the Bible? Well, because fear is a powerful thing and God, whenever God shows up in the Bible, either as a messenger or as voice or when people encounter God, typically God says, do not be afraid. Now why is that? Why should we not be afraid? And by the way, this isn't a command. This is an invitation. God is saying, do not be afraid. I am with you. I know you're afraid. Here I am. You're not alone. God's not saying, do not be afraid because I'm going to fix it. God doesn't say, do not be afraid. I'm not going to let anything bad happen to you. That's not what God says. God says, I'm with you. Because, as the, as the passage says, Jesus saw humanity as a sheep without a shepherd. Terrified sheep. You know, ready to run in the wrong direction and get hurt. There's something interesting in the story that follows the scripture reading. And actually, it's John who records this scene of Jesus feeding 5,000 people. Now, now again... Jesus is exhausted. The disciples are exhausted. They're trying to get away to a deserted place. And at least 5,000 people are kind of stampeding after them. And are, 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 they want a piece of Jesus. They want his touch, his, his teaching, his healing. And really, it's like 5,000 hangry people. Because it's the end of the day. They're hungry. The sun's going down. And... The disciples are obviously very afraid. What are we going to do with this? this, this what is this group going to do to us? And John records that Jesus asked the little boy, what do you have? Like, what's in your, what's in your basket? And there, were, there was something in there. It wasn't empty. Um, it was some loaves and some fishes. And I like this picture, and I want to offer it to you. When you're afraid, and first of all, if you're afraid, you need to be able to know that you're afraid. You need to feel fear, what fear does to your body. You have to be aware of your fear, or it will control you. And you have to say, what's in my basket? Literally, it's almost like you can think of your belly as like a big basket. And sure, you feel that fear, but what's in that basket beside the fear? We have to be able to push that fear over once we sense it and make room for God's presence, for an awareness of God's presence. And all that that can bring in, hope, possibility, resources, that fear wants to just crush out. It's, it's a spiritual discipline that I'm trying now to um, exercise in the face of my fear. And the more I've been doing it, the more I realize my fear and name my fear, sense where it is in my body, then I can breathe, I can make room in my basket for more than fear. And so one way I've done that, even though this thing happened to me 20 years ago and I'll never quite get over it, trying to find the meaning in it. But one thing I figured out is that day I went in the water, I shouldn't have. I was in a panic. I, be I believe that that fear was trying to protect me. Sometimes... We have to listen to that fear. We don't always push against it and ignore it and, and will ourselves past it. And in other situations in my life, I've started to try and name my fear and make, make, make room in my basket to ask God, help me here. Am I, should I go forward? Should I, should I wait? What's this fear telling me? And um, I think it's actually helping because recently I was invited to the ocean with some friends. And for the first time, and I, I came to the beach and I, I looked out and I said, oh, I want to go swimming in that water. And you know what? I stopped for a minute. I tried to sense just what was going on around me. I said, Lord, you're here with me. And I said what I often say when I take off in the airplane. In life and in death, I belong to you. And I'm going to go swimming. And so in I went. And I swam. Now, I'm not telling you I didn't think about sharks. I did think about sharks. 
but, but I made room in my basket for the joy of swimming and the hope that, that probably nothing bad was going to happen to me. And I managed it, and I loved that swim. And so I guess I want to use that as an example of um, what the Apostle Paul says. We have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. It's not easy working out our salvation. It's not easy making room in our basket of fears for the life of God, for the, the, the fruit of the Spirit, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so I want to offer this to you to, to think more deeply about fear, to incorporate the reality of fear into your faith life, and to... Um, to, to be able to not only name your fear, but, but then move your fear over for all the other things that God can pour into your basket so that you can live an abundant life, so that you're not driven by your fear, and so that you can uh, just continue to grow and, and work out your salvation. You know, the psalmist in two places, one says, I sought the Lord and he delivered me from all my fears. And I always say, but how? Well, this is one example of the way God might deliver us from our fears. And so I offer that to you today. And, um, you know, let's do it together. Maybe I know people have said things like, I'm afraid for the future of the church. Um, you know, I'm afraid we need to, you know, I don't know. You know what all the things people, you know, COVID's coming back. I mean, all these things. But you know what? We need each other. We need each other, uh, the people of faith. We need to be able to discuss our fears with each other and be honest. Pray for one another and help one another make room in our baskets for the very life of God that, that does um, help us manage being human beings in a, in a fearful world. But we have a very brave God who can give us courage. So may we go in peace as we meditate on this word.